Hello folks and welcome to GED Microlearning. This is a YouTube channel that specializes in the GED math. So today, as always, we're going to go through uh, 10 questions with the different formats of questions that you can be expected to um, know for your GED test. Uh, we're going to start with angles. I had a request from at Athena Johnson. Um, so we're going to throw a few angle questions today and we're going to start with this one with a parallelogram. So it says in figure A, B, C, D, what is the measure of angle B? So before jumping into it, let's do a quick recap. As we said, this is a parallelogram and notice that there's several symbols there. Um, on the um, parallelogram that you should be aware of. So whenever you have these uh, lines that are the same, what they're telling you is that the length of side AB is the same as the length of side CD. Okay, so have you ever had a question on that? Um, that's what they're asking you. Similarly, these two are telling you that the side AC is the same in length as the side BD. And finally, uh, the angles here, the angles that you can see in a circle, so angle A and angle D are the same, and then the, ang the angles without a circle, B and C, are also equal to each other. Okay, so those are like a two, uh, three facts that you have to know for, for a parallelogram. All right. The other super important detail is that whenever they ask you questions about any four-sided plane figure, that could be a square, a rectangle, a trapezoid, a trapezoid, however you pronounce it, or a parallelogram, for example, all of these are going to add up to 360 degrees. Okay, so if you add up all the angles, that's what you get. So knowing that, we can go back to our question and we can say that angle A plus B plus C plus D is equal to 360. And we know from the question that um, angle D is 60 degrees, so we'll just plop that in there. And we said that angle A and angle D are the same, so we'll plop that in there. And we don't know what B and C are, so we're just going to call them X, and we said that they're the same, so we're going to say X plus X. Okay, so if you tidy that up, uh, you end up with this, and now all you have to do is isolate the x on the left side by subtracting 120 from each side. That's going to give you this, divided by 2 is equal to x is equal to 120. And if you go ahead and you add up all the angles of your parallelogram, you'll see that you get 360. So the correct answer is D. The next question is a fill-in-the-blank uh, format question uh, looking at functions. So it says each term in the second row is determined by function y is equal to 3x minus 1. What number belongs in the shaded box? Write your answer in the box below. All right, so before we tackle the question, let's uh, remind ourselves uh, what this means. So whenever you get these uh, little tables that you can see there in the right, um, what it's essentially telling you is that if you plug any x value into the equation on the left, it's going to give you that answer for y. Okay, so in this case, if we plug 1 into the equation, our answer uh, should be y is equal to 2. Okay, so let's try it out. So we're going to plug in that 1 into the equation, right? So we have 3 times 1 minus 1. And that, according to this function um, uh, box, should give us y is equal to 2, which it does. Let's try a different one. Okay, so here it's telling us that if we plug in 2 into the equation, then y should is equal 5. So there we have it. 3 times 2 minus 1 is 6 minus 1. So yes, y is equal to 5. Okay, so now let's go ahead and do the question. So in this case, what we have to do is just plug in that value for x, and then that gives us 32. All right, so question three um, is asking you to uh, multiply um, this expression out. And here what um, I usually do is uh, something called the FOIL method. I use the FOIL method, and this is an acronym which uh, helps you to remember which numbers you have to multiply and what order you have to do them. Okay, so F stands for first. So if you look at the two, um, at these two expressions, 
first are the first numbers in each bracket, right? So 5x multiplied by 2x. Then the O stands for outer, okay, in green. So you would take the outer numbers of each bracket. I for inner, you would look at the inner um, numbers or expressions. And then last, you would look at the last um, expression in each bracket. Okay, and that's how you get the FOIL method. That's how you do the FOIL method. Okay, so we'll leave it there as a little cheat sheet for you. And then all you have to do is, is follow that and you would end up with something like this. And then uh, what we have to do then is simplify it further, cleaning, cleaning it up a little bit, and you end up with that. So the correct answer is B. So the next type of question is one of these uh, drop down menu questions where you click on the drop down menu and it gives you um, options for the answer. And it usually entails you um, interpreting data from a graph. So it says uh, the car traveled the further, furthest distance at this speed. Okay, so the first thing, um, as always, let's remind ourselves how to read a graph. We look at the title. So this is a graph that is talking about um, car acceleration. In the y-axis, it looks at the speed in miles per hour. And in the x-axis, you can see that it looks at distance traveled in meters. Okay, and it's telling us that in the question to find at what point the car traveled the furthest distance. So you would look at your x-axis in meters and select the furthest distance, 400 meters, and then just follow that to the y-axis to find out the speed in miles per hour, which you can see is 300. Point A is located at minus 2 comma 5, a graph of which of the following equations would pass through point A. All right, so quick recap. Whenever you see something like this, what they're giving you is what is known as an ordered pair. And these, remember, are coordinates. Okay, so the first value is an x value. The second one is your y coordinate. And what you have to do in this question, so we know that those are the values for x and for y, is go ahead and plug these x values and y values into each of the um, answer options that they're providing. Okay, and make sure that you get the same answer on the left side of your equation to the right side. Okay, so let's start with option A. So theoretically, if we plug in those x and y values, we should get a minus 4, theoretically. Let's try it out. Okay, so if we plug those numbers in, oops, I already gave you the answer, sorry. So um, it would be that. Okay, so you end up with minus 6 plus 10 on the left side is equal to minus 4. 4 is equal to minus 4. So that is incorrect. Okay, so option A is wrong. All right, uh, let's do the second one. Um, we plug in these numbers again. And sorry, I think I've messed up all the order of the um, the answers. Okay, so we plug in those numbers like this. And we end up with 11 is equal to 9. That's also incorrect. Option C, plug in those x and y values. That would be minus 18 is equal to 10, also incorrect. And then finally for D, you're going to end up with minus 6 minus 10, which is minus 16 is equal to minus 16. OK, so there you have it. That is your correct answer. All right, um, um, this next set of questions is, is a, a fill in the, um, the blank, and um, this one involves uh, square roots. So it asks you to type uh, your answer in the box in radical form, meaning the most simplified uh, expression of that square root. So let's quickly remind ourselves on square roots. So whenever you have a square root, what you have to ask yourself is, is there a number that when you multiply it by itself gives you that number under the square root, right? So if we look at 25, what number multiplied by itself gives you 25? 5, exactly. What about 2? No, sorry, what about 4? I already gave you the answer. It's 2, right? 2 times 2 is 4. Okay, what about the square root of 9? It's 3. And what about the square root of 100? That would be 10, right? Because 10 times 10 is 100. Okay, so now 
this is going to be very easy because we already determined these square roots. So we know that the square root of 100 is 10 and the square root of 25 is 5. So 10 divided by 5 is equal to 2. Okay, question 7 um, is asking you to simplify the following expression. And here what you have to do, um, you have to be careful, is uh, with the signs. Okay, so we have a negative 2 that we have to multiply by that expression in the bracket. Okay, so we would multiply that out and we would end up with this. And now you have to clean it up. And the way that you clean it up is by adding what we call common terms. What do we mean by this? So this is like if you were trying to add apples to oranges to pears. You can't add them up, right? So in math, it's kind of a similar thing. You, you can only add um, fruits <laughs> or terms that are the same. So you would get all the terms that have an x to the fourth power together, which we only have one. Then you get all the terms that have an x to the third power together. So in this case, we have minus x to the third plus 4x to the third. So we would uh, solve that. Get, that gives us negative 4x to the third. And then we finally get our last term, which is uh, minus 3x. Okay, so now you've kind of cleaned the expression up adding con common terms where you could, and then this is your final answer, which is option A. All right, so in the GD, sometimes they also ask you to physically interact with an image. That could be a graph, that could be a, li um, a line plot, Okay, so in this case, uh, they're giving us a graph and they're asking us to plot a point. And notice there again, we have those ordered pairs. So once again, remember that the x value is the first value, the y value is the second one. Okay, so we would start at our zero for the x value there in blue. Because it's minus two, we're gonna move two spots to the left. And then for the y value, we start at zero and we're gonna move up to seven. Okay, so at the point where these two arrows would intersect, that's the coordinate minus two comma seven, which is where you would make a little um, dot in your test. Ruth is planning a pl uh, meeting for her company. She has a budget of uh, $1,425 for renting the meeting room at a hotel and providing lunch for participants. She expects 32 people will attend uh, the meeting. The cost of renting the room is $350, which inequality shows how to find the amount uh, X that Ruth can spend on lunch for each person. Okay, so one important detail, uh, she has a budget of 1425 So that means she can spend up to that amount. She can spend less than that amount or equal to that amount, but not more. As always, um, I recommend that you have a quick look at your answers before tackling the problem because sometimes um, you can eliminate things straight away. So if you look here, we have these inequality symbols and let's remind ourselves what these mean. We said that she has a budget, right? So she can spend less than her budget or less than or equal to her budget. So these are the symbols that we want to see in our answer, okay? Less than or less than or equal to. So if we go back to our question, if you look at A and you look at C, you can see that it says more than or equal in both cases. So we can immediately eliminate these two options because again, the budget is 1,425. She cannot spend more. And now um, I always like to think about your equation in words first. So we know that um, she has a number of people that are coming to the event and she has to feed these people, right? So we have to multiply that by the cost of lunch, which would be X, we don't know what that is. Um, and then she has a fixed cost for the meeting room and all of that together has to be less than or equal to 1,425. So all you're gonna do now is pull those numbers from the question to fill out your equation, okay? And it would be that. 32 people are the number of people coming. X is the, the cost of lunch, which we don't know. And $350 is the cost of the meeting, which is fixed, they tell us in the question. Okay, so your correct answer would be B. 
All right, um, so in figure ABC, what is the measure of angle C? All right, so um, one thing that you have to remember, the same way that we spoke about four-sided plane figures, is that when you talk about angles, all the inner angles of a triangle um, have to add up to 180 degrees. Okay, so this is something that you have to commit to memory because it's going to make your life really easy. Um, so whatever triangle they throw at you, just remember 180. Okay, so with that information in mind, we know that all these three angles, angle A plus angle B plus angle C, should equal 180. So let's plug in the values that they give us in the question and then clean it up a little bit. So now all we have to do is isolate C, okay? And we do that by subtracting 112 from the left side of the equation, doing the same on the right, and that gives us 68. Okay, so if you add all of these values together, 68 plus 85 plus 27, let me just double check. So 68 plus 85 plus 27, you get 180 degrees. Okay, so your correct answer would be B. All right, folks, well, that is it. Thank you so much for your time. Thank you for watching. If you found any value, consider subscribing or signing up for the bell notifications, sharing with your friends. As always, thank you again for your time. Have a terrific rest of your day.